Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Spirit of Life Church. If you please stand and join us in our opening song, Here I Am, Lord. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We go. 
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord.
From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the, syna- when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought it? By his hands. Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he is not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Over the past uh, few weeks, we have been looking at the infused virtues, the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And today we come to the virtue of charity. And so, just as with the other virtues, we'll stop and to consider uh, first to have a, a good definition of what that is, and maybe I think a lot of us already have a pretty good idea of what that is, but to really stop and to examine and to look at uh, what that means and how does it affect uh, my life, my spiritual life, uh, my growth in prayer, and all of those things, and just even my concept and understanding of the world. Charity is incredibly powerful. And so as we do go through it, we'll use our scriptures, of course, but uh, there is really so much to charity that we can't possibly cover it all in the length of a reasonable homily. So before we begin and we look at charity, we understand that in the order of becoming, in the order in which it kind of takes root in our soul, it it happens uh, after and because of faith and hope and then charity. But in the order of importance, we know charity is the greatest. It is really the mother of all the virtues. It's absolutely necessary. And to understand charity rightly, I think sometimes we go and we, when we think of charity, it's like, well, it's helping our neighbor, right? Yes, but its first importance is directing us towards love of God, always and everywhere, in all things. For his sake, not because of the consolations he can give us or because of the good things or any of that sort of of understanding. But the proper understanding is love of God for his sake. Now, even within the loving of our neighbor, it's not only the loving of our neighbor who are our friends, but it's the loving of our neighbor who are our enemies. And it's not for their sake. Even in the loving of our neighbors, it is for the sake of God always and everywhere. And Jesus Christ is very explicit about this. He says to love your neighbor, even the pagans preach that. And so he's calling us to something greater. Charity is ultimately the directing and the loving uh, in this uh, relationship with God, whereby he loves us totally and completely. Us returning everything and everyone back to him. That's charity. That's why it's the mother of all virtues, because everything that we do responds to charity. Now, how does this play out in our lives? It plays out in a number of ways, and we'll look through at three of them here in our scriptures today. As we look uh, in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, we see him being sent by our God to the Israelites to do something that is rather distasteful to most of us. He's sent to correct them. Now, 
This is not just merely a way to correct them, but it is an act of charity. Why? Because it's again directing our neighbor to the love of God, for the sake of God. That can be difficult to do sometimes because we think that charity has something to do with just making sure uh, everyone is loved and accepted where they're at and we just kind of uh, push it off to one side and we don't want to correct and we don't want to get anybody anxious or any, that's not, that's not the case. And indeed we will be judged on that at the final judgment. Not only by God, but by the neighbors who, when that time comes, will say, why didn't, if you knew, why did you not correct me? It was, would have been for the betterment of my soul. And indeed, that's what Ezekiel is doing. It's for the betterment of the soul of all the Israelites, and indeed for the kingdom, to be turned back to God. And so, my friends, in charity, we are called to preach the truth and the goodness and the beauty of God. That has to happen. Why is that so important when we say, for the glory of God? Look, my friends, uh, whoever is our enemy, right? We don't want them to remain that way. Whoever is the enemy of God, we don't want them to remain that way. What we're hoping for is that when we do hopefully come to the glory of heaven, that all then are friends for the sake of of God. It's in that we see the unity of God as he has created us to be. That's what makes us made in his image and likeness. Charity ultimately, just as the other virtues do, the other infused virtues and virtues in general, right? It doesn't purify so much our affections or our emotions. It purifies our intellect and our will, which then in turn direct the things that we care and desire about to God. That's where the purification lies. And that's why we need it. Secondly, as we look in our second reading, we see Paul, and he talks about this uh, much, but in this particular uh, letter of St. Paul, his second one to the Corinthians, we see a very well-known uh, piece of Scripture. And what is he talking about? He says... A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. This is a direct effect of charity. Why is that? I don't know about you, but when I was growing up in high school and in college, probably the biggest thing that was continuously pounded into us was the necessity of raising our self-esteem about ourselves and of thinking of ourselves as being great no matter uh, what it was that we were doing. Maybe it wasn't even a good thing, but we need to, you know, rise, raise our self-esteem. No. This is directly contrary to charity. Why? It leads to pride. Pride leads me to not needing God. It leads us away from humility that great virtue whereby we have a correct understanding of who we are. If anyone doubts this, I turn you to St. Catherine of Siena. I turn you to St. Francis of Assisi. I promise you, they thought they were the least of all peoples, that they were the greatest sinners. But I also guarantee you, they did not lack in confidence. But it was not confidence in themselves. It was confidence in them knowing that they are called to be children of the Father Most High. And because of that, the world could not touch them. And the world could not understand them. They lived in a different reality. They lived in the reality, the ultimate reality of what it means to have the attitude with God to which we are all called and to which they entered into while still here on earth. That's ultimately why we look to them. We look to the saints not because of all the good things that they did in the world. We look to the saints because they've reached beatitude in this world. They've reached unity with God in this world. They've directed their thoughts, their hearts, their intentions, everything to God. That's why we look to the saints. And then lastly, as we look in our gospel, we see people are astonished at Christ. Why? Because of his wisdom. 
And wisdom is a fruit of charity. As charity perfects our intellect and our will, we come closer to the true knowledge of God. And as we come closer to the true knowledge of God, we start to see things as they are meant to be and as they rightly are. The closer we come to that, the more we grow in wisdom, which is the height of knowledge. And so, of course, Jesus Christ, who is God himself, who is wisdom itself, of course, even for those who did not believe in him, could not deny his wisdom. Couldn't deny it. They may not have thought he was God, but they absolutely recognized his wisdom. And so, my friends, we desire and we want to know in this path, the spiritual path as we're trying uh, to, uh, are on our pilgrimage to God as the pilgrim church, how can I know where I'm at so that I can work on the things that will get me closer to this union with God, which we desire? Now, in the history of the church, there are many ways to speak about it, but in general, and to keep it simple today, there are basically three levels. People have different names for it, whatever. But we'll just say first level, second level, third level for the ease uh, of speaking about it today. In the first level, my friends, as we're go undergoing and trying to undergo purifications, the main thing is to stay away from mortal sin. Staying away from mortal sin is very important. Why is that? Because we cannot, God, remember God in the infused virtues is the one who gives it to us. Now, God never lessens that. He will only increase it. But we can, of our own volition, simply lose charity entirely through mortal sin. That is ultimately why it's so very important that we try to stay away from it as much as we can. And those in the first level, mostly that's what we're trying to do. We're also trying to weed out any other imperfections, any other venial sins, right? And the vast majority of us, we're, we're, we're in that first stage. But we are called to something higher. And as we approach the second stage, we're working on our perfection because we are called to be perfect as God is perfect. Remember, Christ never says, ah, you have sinned, that's okay, go on your way. No, he says, all right, you have sinned, you have repented, now go and sin no more. Okay? That's what we're trying to do in the second stage. The illuminative stage, as some would call it. We're focused on growing in virtue. We're not as much worried about sinning anymore because we've kind of uh, dug all of those things out of us, hopefully. And then as we get to the third stage, what we're really focused on and what we come to is a unity with God. And this is where the saints reside. They have reached, as it were, the continuous presence of God in their life. And that's why you can't touch them because what are you going to do? What can you do to St. Francis of Assisi? Can you take away all of his possessions because they mean a whole bunch to him? No, he's already given them away for the sake of God. Can you take his life from him? No, you can't. He's already given it to God. He wants you to take his life from him. Can you make him suffer? Sure, you can. But he also desires that. Why? Because through suffering comes salvation, not only for himself, but also for his neighbors around him, which then in turn brings glory to God. It makes the fulfillment of the promise that Christ made that he would destroy sin and death a reality. And that all has to do with charity. And so my friends, as we approach our altar today, we pray for that great gift where God in love for us comes to meet us in his body, blood, soul, and divinity, and we come to meet him with hearts made pure through his grace. Yes, we receive benefit from receiving him in the Eucharist, but never forget, ultimately, it is all directed towards the glory of God.
And now rising, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Nourished by the word of God, we place our prayers and petitions before him who loves us beyond all measure. That the church may continue to serve the spiritual and physical needs of the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may have the courage to stand firm in the teachings of Christ and preach the true freedom that he brings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That public officials may consistently work to protect the welfare of the weak and the dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as our nation observes Independence Day, we may give thanks for our freedom and use it in the service of life and of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who speak up for the sanctity of life, but find ridicule and rejection in return, that they may have the blessings that belong to the prophets, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those trapped by poverty or poor health may ha be strengthened by God's saving love and by caring people who help them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may grant us adequate moisture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have asked for our prayers through the prayer line and prayer basket, and for those who have died and for those who grieve them, that they may find comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God Almighty Father, in your great love and mercy, we ask that you would hear and answer our prayers in accord with your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace to us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, the John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to give a quick reminder. Uh, next Sunday will be the Town and Country Celebration where Bishop Kagan will be having Mass and will also be blessing uh, the, the Gumbo Flats Ranch as well as their animals and machinery and all of those things. Uh, the Mass will begin at noon. Uh, the blessing begins at 1130. Uh, please check the bulletin for more details. There will be food afterwards. If you would like to join us for the Mass, please certainly come. And if you'd like to join us for the food as well, please RSVP through the diocese if you could. Uh, so we have an idea of how many people will be there. Uh, I got to go out there. It's Matthew and Lisa Rebinich's uh, ranch. Uh, it's a great place. There'll be a petting zoo for the kids, hay rides. Uh, it's a wonderful place, uh, really good people, and it will be a good time. Uh, and then also, I pray you all have a very happy and safe 4th of July. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ending. Go in peace.